Dogs and people have a long and strong relationship. None are closer than a working dog and the daily assistant to a farmer or rancher with their livestock. We'll watch some of the world's best cattle dogs, Border Collies, next on Show Me Ag. Welcome to Show Me Ag. I'm your host, Kyle Vickers. Thanks for joining us. Working dogs have been developed over centuries to help folks carry out their daily lives. Border Collies are specially bred to herd livestock and are arguably one of the smartest and most trainable breeds. Some of the best Border Collies in the world were recently right here in central Missouri for a competition to exhibit the skills of both dog and trainer. The national finals contest was held at Leeton, Missouri, just south of Warrensburg. We have Thad Fleming who hosted the national contest with us tonight. Thad, thank you for coming in. I know the, about a month or so ago, you had this huge crowd at, uh, and, and people from all over the country come into your place. Yeah, we, we, did, we did, we really enjoyed it. It was a, it was a good experience. It was a great experience. <laughs> well, let, let's talk a little bit first about the dogs. And I'll have to admit, I, I'm prejudiced. I, I love dogs in general, and I've had a couple of Border Collies and right now. I have an Australian Shepherd. I think they're wonderful dogs. What's the history behind the Border Collies and those shepherding uh, working dogs? Well, was, the Border Collies have come to the top and that's why everybody has chosen the border collie it's, it's hard to match what the border collie can do um, their 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 trainability their intelligence and stuff like that and it's it's what they're bred to do it's just like any working dog it's they're bred to do it and, and the border collie has risen to the top of of the dogs I, I think I read somewhere that there's a border collie in England that knows 400 words and I've seen it it's it's just pretty amazing you can go pick out a, a, a red toy or a blue bone or whatever they tell him yeah that's I've, I've seen that that too, but you know, I mean, it It all goes back to that dog just knows something different and he just picks it out, you know, and uh, he can, but it's. And uh, mostly, I mean, we've seen seen a lot of Border Collies, maybe they're used to working sheep, but they've been adapted. Uh, Missouri, of course, is big cow-calf country. They've been ad more or less adapted to work cattle? They've been adapted, to, uh, the, the Border Collie can be trained to work anything if they have the power in the presence. Um, the cattle take a little more power in the presence to work over the sheep I mean, they use them on geese, they use them on ducks. They, I mean, they, they'll work about anything. It, it depends on how they're brought up. If they're brought up, if, if they're brought up working sheep or cattle, uh, you know, the, really the way they are, it's, it's bred into them. You know, a calf, a calf dog bite low, bite ahead. head. It's all bred, it all comes back. Yeah, they, they really don't bite the animals, at least in the exhibit. They, they really, that's kind of a flaw, isn't it? No, we don't want one to chew them up. That's, that's, that's just stressing at the livestock and stuff, you know. But when they need to hit something, that they have the capability of hitting it. That's what's different in the sheepdog competitions and stuff like that. The cattle, but you got to have enough power in the dog to walk up and, and be willing to take the hit or you know to put the hit on. Is is uh, some of the weaker dogs won't won't do. And uh, some of these cattle can be pretty contrary. Oh yeah, they can be. They can be very contrary. The more there are, the harder it is. So it, I know they're very trainable. They're very smart. I, I, I've often said if I was as smart as my dog is, I would all get along a lot better. Uh, there are they easy to train, hard to train? Well, I've got two kids, and I can tell you they're both different, and they're, <laughs> and they're the same way. It, all the dogs are different, and that's why some some people like to train their dog from uh, all the way through. I personally don't because I don't. It, you got when you start one, you got to finish it. You, you got to keep with it on a daily routine. But there's always some little quirks about it. Some don't like going right. Some don't like going left. It's always something different. It's always a challenge. That's what's fun about doing the dogs. But that's that's a learning curve, and that's why we always we're always working them, always training on them. But once you, once you start one, it's never over. Well, let's talk a little bit about how this the finals came about to be at, at your place. I'm on the handlers board, and they were looking for a place to put it for the next three years is what the president he wanted it's, it's hard to come up with something every year I don't I'd only been on the board one day <laughs> when did they see you coming as a I, newcomer they said we're <laughs> well I, I traveled I was in the sheepdog world I, I've, I've for the last pretty close to 10 years my son and I've traveled around we've went to a lot of sheepdog trials some of the, some of the best in, in the country in the United States anyway um, the big one. So I knew I knew what I wanted to do when I was going to hold it, but 
but he needed some place to put it. I really wasn't in the cattle dog side. I was, like I said, I was in the sheep dog side. I talked to some of the, I know a lot of the handlers, and I talked to some of them and said, yeah, you know, it worked. My place would be fine. But the biggest obstacle I had was, was getting the cattle, getting 200 head of, 250 head of cattle looking the same, weighing the same, all the same. The first phone call I had, he's the one that asked me, he says, what's it going to take? And, I'm, and that's when I told him, his name's Bob Salmon. He said, I'll donate the cattle. I'm going to estimate that as a rough donation, about $10,000 donation from, from, from him to donate the cattle. But that's what he does. He backgrounds cattle, and he'll take them heifers, and he'll and sink them, and he'll, he'll sell them off as bred heifers later on this fall. He'll breed them this fall. But for him to do that, that was a, that was a hurdle I had to get over the most from there on. It's clear sailing for, as far as I was concerned in my own part. The hardest thing for me was explaining everything to everybody else here what was going to happen. I've been to it and I've done it, but my, none of the people on my committee hardly ever had it except for Bob, and Bob had never been to the national finals. One other lady, Robin Reasoner, she'd been to the finals, but she'd only went one time. So it, it was really, and then there's Deb Meyer from Iowa. She's been there on the dog side, but not on the sheep side. So for me to do it, I knew what I had to do, but I had a committee that really knew much about it. So I was selling this thing off to all my all the neighbors and the, you know and everything else and everybody always wanted to think of the sheepdog trial because I've, I've hosted a lot of sheepdog trials we'd run we'd have 300 dogs over a three-day weekend I mean we'd run a lot of dogs but they never listened to me about the cattle part <laughs> and then the finals so I think that once everybody started seeing it and coming around it, it took place but I, I had to put a bid in on it and I, I went to the FFA and I tried to get them I, I felt like if they could be a part of it let them work some instead of just always just giving it to them and I thought it would work out pretty good and it did uh, the kids they worked they worked on parking cars and it was a is a hurdle park cars this year but they was my co-chair and then I tell you we we had a bunch of meetings and stuff and it, it, we we raised a lot of money to put on this event and uh, without the ABCA we it wouldn't have been possible ABCA was a big donation to this thing and American Border Collie American Association, Border Collie Association yes American Border Collie Association they they donate a lot to help us take care of the cattle, haul the cattle, and that's where they really put the money. And then they give us some grant money too, but then they also put in a prize money. In order to run the finals, you have to be a member of the ABCA, American Border Collie Association. But in order for me to put it on, uh, we wrote a real nice letter. That the, the university ag department gave me an intern. Her name is Danny Zimmerman. And we put together a letter and and it, it worked out real good. The, the community really stood behind us. We're, we're, we're cattle background. Missouri being one of the largest cattle producing states and Johnson County being one of the largest ones, it was pretty simple to really pull off. I mean, if I was trying to put on a sheepdog finals, it never happened. Well, I think you may be selling yourself a little bit short with how difficult this was, but uh, uh, finding the perfect community to host the USBCHA National Catalog Finals wasn't an easy task. Too large a community and the economic benefits can't be appreciated too small of a community and getting enough volunteers to assist can be difficult. But as you'll see in this next story, Thad, here in the entire community surrounding Leeton, Missouri, made for a perfect fit for the 2013 National Catalog Finals. This is the finals of the finals. Our event's called the Catalog Finals, but this is the finals within the finals, just today. Clean slate, these boys all started this morning with a zero and they're Today's run determines the national champion. You can run any breed here that meets our qualification standard, which is worth it. Work ethic only. It's based on how you do at sanctioned events throughout the U.S. during the year. This is the top 40 dogs in the U.S. and uh, um, top 50, excuse me. And and then then the age, the nursery. I think there was 20 in that this year. Now, uh, these events are throughout the United States, as I say, through the year. There's a year-long qualifying process. Uh, basically, this is the top 20%. You've got to be in the top 20% of a sanctioned event to qualify for here. Uh, some of us managed to slip through that somehow. Don't ask me how we do. Well, they start off with a gather, which is... They're sending them off to the left here. I've got my back to it, so you'll learn how stupid I am. I'll, I'll get it all wrong, but they're sending out to the left first on a gather. That's the dog leaving the handler, going out, arrive behind the cows without disturbing them, messing them up, bring them down to them, and then 
what's unique to today's part of it is the handler has to stay behind the timeline and direct his dog to go back and get a second set of heifers over in the other corner of the field and bring them in and join up. Um, then the drive is basically what we've been doing for three days, just showing your dog. That's showing maneuverability and biddability of the dog to maneuver the cattle through two sets of gates out there and around. And then, and then uh, back to the corral system, that's to show you can pin and do some at hand work as you would at home with shoots and stuff like that. Sort of trying to emulate in a way what you can and do with a stock dog in, in your cattle operation. Well, uh, my own dogs, I just train them at my own pace. Uh, I do training for other people and generally I try to work their dog five days a week. But it's just, you just train them at, at, a leisure, at, at your pace. I don't start working one until he's a year older or older. And uh, you just raise him up from a pup and just teach him his obedience. And then the formal training will again start at about a year old. And uh, if they're a little older than that, then that is usually better. And it takes me about three months to, to make him a good useful farm dog. But, uh, but you'll spend several more months training him for competition. I've competed with some with just three months training but for what we're doing right here it takes more than that it, t it takes several more months and then through their whole life you'll always train on them and keep them tuned up and get them ready for these competitions well the border collies have a tremendous amount of energy because it's high drive i mean they're driven to do something they're driven to work sheep through generations and generations of breeding and if you're not going to burn that energy off somehow, if you're not going to play ball with them, if you're not going to throw a frisbee for them, if you're not going to take them to obedience or agility classes, and first and foremost, if you're not going to work livestock with them, they're going to find some way to burn that off. And the first thing they're going to do is chew a hole in your couch. You know what I mean? Or the seat out of your car. So they're going to they're going to do something. They're not just laying around. They're not. They are not lackadaisical. You know, you need to do your homework before you go buy one. Um, if you want one for working and herding, uh, like what we're doing, then you got to buy one out of out of uh, you got to buy one from a breeder that and out of parents that are doing what we're doing. Uh, just because it's a border collie doesn't mean that it's capable of going out here and doing this. Uh, in my opinion, most border collies do have the instinct, but uh, that doesn't mean it's capable of being trained to do this. Due to, due to, due to the, what you have to do to train them. I mean, uh, it's it's a it's a regiment uh, that they go through, um, and um, and uh, some of them just don't. Ha some of them, just like any other breed, doesn't have enough instinct. That's why you have to get them from good breeders that breed for that instinct. As far as making good pets, um, you know, I think they're just like any other breed of dogs. Uh, they can make good pets, but because of their intelligence, they need to be um, handled and and treated uh, a little differently. Um, they need to be disciplined and, and uh, it's kind of like uh, raising children, I think. Uh, support from the community has been unequal. The people in the community have pulled together and made things work where it almost looked like it. There might be problems because just because of the weather. I, I mean, there were a lot of things that had to be done very quickly because of the windows of time available to to get certain things done. Some of this fence was put up in uh, on this field um, in two days. Just and the only reason it was able to happen that way was because people jumped in gave their support, came in and worked. They worked their tails off to put this thing on and make it work. And it's, it's just without uh, community involvement, community support, you know, an event like this just doesn't happen. Well, it takes a big community effort and by a big group of people from an area coming together. We do not offer enough people to come in here and economically impact Kansas City. But we can have an economic impact on Leighton and the surrounding communities. And that this size area works for us, if that makes sense, economically. Well, uh, this is a fantastic facility. 
Uh, Thad Fleming and his family and, and his friends have done a fantastic job. Bob Salmon uh, has donated the cattle, which is just extremely generous. Thad Fleming and his family have donated their farm, their time, their labor, their money. Um, just uh, incredible what the people in this community have done to support this event in Leeton, Missouri. Um, I'm un I understand that this event may come back here next year, uh, which would be fantastic for us and fantastic for the folks in this area. And uh, just can't say enough about what they've done for us in, this, this, uh, in, in keeping this sport going, the Cattle Dog Finals, USBCHA Cattle Dog Finals. If you'd like to learn more about these dogs or find a kennel near you, more information can be found at the usbcha.com. That I was there at your farm and, and I was just amazed at, at the crowd that was there and, and the weather wasn't very good. But one of the funniest things we saw just at the end there was these dogs had worked so hard and the first thing they did was ran and jumped in, uh, in that bath and, and cooled off a little bit. Yeah, the Sunday was, Sunday was a little nicer weather, it was a little warmer, so the dogs, they'd been out there for about 12 minutes, so they had, they'd put their time in. And, you know, it's in the spring of the year, so the, some of them pretty well have their winter coat on still. They hadn't really shed out very good yet, so we, had to, we keep that on there, but boy. Well, they're, they're just going for a full run for how long? 12 minutes. 12 they minutes. 12 minutes on Sunday for the, for the final go. I, I, we've got a great video there, but you really can't appreciate how hard those dogs work for those 12 minutes. They're on the go. Yeah, you, you can't really film the whole thing because people would get lost in it, but it's, it's, a, it's a hard 12 minutes for the dog, and he's, he's really working hard. I mean, um, and the sun, the sun come out on Sunday, and it's a little warmer. The first couple of days, we didn't need to worry about water. I, don't, I, don't, I, I doubt very many dogs went to water, to be honest yeah. with you. But that second day, whenever you, you add them extra minutes to it, and it really takes time, and them dogs, them dogs want that water, you know. Uh, uh, three, two groups of three cows each got to be brought up several hundred yards, put through some paces, and then gathered in a corral. Pretty challenging. Yeah, it's, it's about 200 yards, 220, something like that. I, I didn't really mark it off. Uh, I've run enough trials out there to know, but that's about what it is. It's about 200 yards, and the drive was probably 250, 300 yard drive, and then the pin. Um, next year, we're gonna change it up a little bit. The last obstacle was, it was a nice pin donated by uh, Kingsville Livestock. It, it was a real nice thing for them to you put it out there, but it's too nice a thing to work with. I mean, it's a nice piece of equipment, but I think we're gonna try and change it up next year and you know make it different. But it's a long 12 minutes for you know for both of them to be out there. Yeah, they're working pretty hard that whole time. Uh, the the challenge here is that the owner stays in one location, right? And the owner has to stay behind the, what, they, what they call the timeline, and he can't he can move back and forth to kind of help see and help 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 his dog a little bit. But other than that, he has to stay behind that line. If I'm not mistaken, some of them use a voice command, some of them use hand gestures, mo some of them use a whistle. Mo most of them are gonna use whistles. Your highest percentage, is, I'd say it's 90% is gonna be probably whistles. Very few hand gestures. The only thing hand gestures at, at the front, when you're just tr really, you're trying to get the, the livestock's eye, not the dog's eye. Uh, most of it's whistles. And most of it's gonna be whistles. These were the top dogs in the country. Yeah, they were, they were the top. Tell we, us how you qualified. You have to travel all over the country, spending a lot of time and money on the road to go to these trials. Not just the money to get there, but the entry fees because it's cattle. Not very many people will let you work their cattle. I mean, they're they're you know they're too high dollar to work, and, and so your entry fees are high. I mean, these guys that spend probably average, I'd say seven hundred a thousand on a weekend to, to get qualified. You had to you had to qualify the top twenty percent to get points. The points throughout get, the year throughout prior. the year yeah. start it starts. Um, I think it's April one, and maybe April. Maybe one, May one. Um, like I said, I'm on the sheepdog side too much. But you, once you, once it's, once that's over, you start gathering points up for the next year finals, and then they'll take the top 20 percent. And the nursery, they'll, we take the top uh, 30 dogs. This year we only had 20 20 the qualified. Nursery dogs. being the younger dogs. 20, yeah, nursery is a three and under. They can't be a three years old as of January one. Um, they have to be under three years of as of January one in, in a nursery. It's just not to put the pressure on them. I mean, they're not ready yet, you know, but for the I, pressure. I think I caught that one of the top nursery dogs was also in the overall final. Uh, actually, he was. The dog that won the, won the nursery won the nursery. actually placed, I would say, there's Ron out of, out of uh, Texas. He was right up there in the top four, I believe. Well, that's what I was thinking in, in my watch, and he did one Ron of the best Ron. jobs. And, and yeah. uh, 
uh, still I with a pretty young dog too. <laughs> well, I bet he's glad he did. Yeah. And uh, one of the points that in this is, is a border collie a good house pet? No. <laughs> They're too an old one, you know, but they they got it's it, they got to stay busy. They, they're mm. built. They're built for a job. They got a lot of energy. They, they got a lot of energy, and they're ready to work. You know, and I keep mine in crates or in a small kennel. I never let mine run loose. They're, they're like a they're like a teenage kid. You <laughs> give them too much string, and they're going to run too wild. And, and they're they're going to do something. They're going to be chasing cars. They're going to be gathering up something. So we, you got to keep them kenneled up if you want if you want the best dog you can have. And then I don't believe in chains, but. Then you can go work your dog, come back, and, and do it, you know. And I've got an Australian Shepherd, very closely related, high right. energy, loves to work cattle, and we use them on a regular basis. If I don't wear her down sometime during the day, she'll drive you crazy sooner I, or later. I exercise my dog four times a day. Yeah. Um, my time with my business, I, I, I usually use a four-wheeler, but when I get a chance, I'll work them, you know. But but I usually use a four wheeler to run them, and we and I'll, I'll run them every morning, every night. And then my, my my kids will turn them out a couple times during the day and let them take care. But I mean, that you have to. Or the, the the house dogs, we don't have any in the house. We, <laughs> we we got some other dogs in the house, but we don't have a border collie. Let's let's talk a little bit. About, you you've got help from a number of civic groups there in Leeton, and, and lots of lots of folks helped. I'll tell you, Johnson Johnson County Cattlemen stepped up and did. Oh man, I couldn't I couldn't give enough thanks to them. Um, they hauled the cattle, Moon Trucking. He donated all. They donated all the trucking, all the cattle. We we drove to Appleton City, which is about an hour away, loaded up all the cattle, as seven trucks and trailers. I mean, they weren't just the small trucks; they were big trucks and trailers. We hauled them back. Uh, Justin Moon with Borderline Fence. He built all the fence for me in two days. He he don't he he did that. Uh, they they hauled the grain. I mean, there's a lot of things, little things that come into play, mm -hmm. you know. And well, every time I'd say something. Justin, Justin was the biggest part of it. He'd say, oh, we got it handled, we got it handled. So, <laughs> but the Cattlemen's Association was a great help. Come down to the wire, somebody said, you know, if the weather gets bad, we're gonna have to park them on the road, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to haul these people in. Next thing you know, Lions Club said, hey, we'll haul them in. And, and it, was, it was neat to see that tr what you was part of, uh, the trailers and the tractors hauling people in. I mean, there'd be they're just loaded down with people yeah. on the tractors. And it, Sunday was good to see. Now on Thursday and Friday, they didn't get out of their cars. There's a couple hundred people sitting around and watching in from the cars, which I don't blame them. I would if I wasn't was nasty weather. If I wasn't a contestant, I would have been sitting <laughs> in a car too. But I tell you that the day started. We started every morning, probably about four, four thirty, gathering up the cattle, getting everything ready. My kids and I, and and when things just start rolling. Um, we had Johnson County uh, Fairgrounds helped us. We had Main Street and Warrensburg. They took care of food. We let a few of the communities, just as small ones, because we didn't want just too many. And it really, the food, nobody got out. So until Sunday was was not the best, you know. But uh, we still had a, approximately 700 people on Saturday and about 1,000 on Sunday. So it was, we had a great turnout. We The school helped us a bunch. Um, FFA the, chapter was out in force. FFA chapter was out. Uh, I mean, just good to coming from a, Cattle background, you a had farming people community. On, on horseback that were helping herd the cattle after the dogs were right. Were Those were all done. volunteers. Ex exhausting the cattle was all volunteers. Mm -hmm. um, most of them, you know, was 4-H or FFA kids, or they had been in 4-H and FFA. And I talked to some of them. And Bethany Granger, she she led them up, and she's going to take it over next year. But we hired we hired the three set out guys on the very top end. They set out there, and they pushed the cattle out every day. We did hire those guys, and they did a super job. Um, but I'll tell you, them kids on them horses exhausted. Then the first day, my boy rode all day, and it was my daughter did too. But he he helped me do chores that night. And I mean, we was cold, we was <laughs> we was froze, being wet all day and wet. Yeah. I mean, it was you know 40s and 50s. But you had so much fun. You said, let's do this oh, again. I, I, I was a glutton for it. I'm I'm ready for the next two years. It's it's good to see the excitement about. It. We we had meetings throughout the year last year. And we'd average five or six people. We had one two weeks after this was open. We had 30 people show up for the meeting. <laughs> and, and everybody's excited about it. Um, the city of Warrensburg manager was there. She was, she, they're excited about having it come back. And they understand now what I was trying to tell them. And they just asked me about what, what it was, what we need to do. And I said, I'm just telling them. It's in my head. I can't, I couldn't tell them. I couldn't explain it. I, I, I'd bring big poster boards and I'd draw it and I'd draw it. But I'm not, I'm a plumber. So I, I couldn't <laughs> explain it very well. But it, it really went over well. I think for the, my brother, he 
he said it probably best if we would have had good weather I don't think we could have took the people because I think we would have had we would have had a lot of people I was probably getting a couple hundred phone calls a day there that, that, that week um, asking if we were gonna have it and all this that's where I made a mistake I used my own phone number on all that stuff and I won't <laughs> do that again but it I tell you it was it just went over it went over so well and, uh, so they made a commitment, the association has made a commitment to come back the next two years. Yeah, we have it for the next two years. And I, I, I think we could probably get it for longer, but we actually have it for 14 and 15. We're off on, we're off and racing on all that. And uh, we're really looking forward to the next two years on that too. I mean, it's, we're, we've got some changes. Yeah, the weather was bad, but you know, it could have been worse. And tornadoes wouldn't have oh, helped me wouldn't none. Have, yeah. I mean, but yeah. six inches of snow that first, that first mm -hmm. morning or second morning there, man, I, I about cried at 430, I'll tell you. I went out there and seen a hundred and forty foot or hundred by forty foot tent on the ground. I I was pretty, pretty upset about it, but we had to go on. There's nothing mm -hmm. we could change. It was happening. It was happening that weekend, no matter what. It was the only well, thing that stopped us was lightning. Oh, uh, the uh, the community pitched in, or it couldn't happen. Oh no, the the community had to be there. I had to have the I had to have the support. The the, the cattlemen, the local farmers, and it had to be something they wanted to see. You know, the FFA, the Lions Club, they all pitched in. The church groups, they all had to pitch in because. I mean, we're 523 people strong in Leeton, Missouri, and it, had, it took the community, it took Johnson County as a whole, it not just, it took Warrensburg, Chihaui, Calhoun, it took all of them to kind of help us pull through it. And I think we'll get more support next year after, after this, after the other TVs and, and, and other things that went on. You know, I think that we've really, it's really words got out there and people have done it and we advertised it pretty good, I felt like, which I'd never done none of them before. And what we did it seemed to have worked and, uh, well, my, my compliments to you and all the folks who put it on. We, I took my family there that afternoon on Sunday, had a great time, and if we can, uh, we'll be back next year well, because look forward really uh, it's a lot of fun to watch. And, and I, I don't think we can just tell people by the video how difficult it is for the dogs and what they're actually doing, and, and it's, it's quite an exciting event to watch. And uh, if you have any love for dogs at all, why it's, uh, it's really fun. And uh, so I, I appreciate all of the time that you put in and all the folks from Johnson County, but I'm afraid that's all the time we have for tonight. But I'd like to say thanks again to Thad uh, Fleming for being with us tonight. And thanks to everyone at the 2013 National Catalog Finals for letting us visit with them as well. And before we go, we'd like to also thank you, our viewers, for tuning in to Show Me Ag. We hope you'll tune in next time for another look at a topic touching rural Missouri. For everyone here at CAMOS and myself, good night. Thank you.